Hello everyone, let's talk about recording sales and sales tax for a merchandising business. There are three basic types of businesses. A service business, which sells services. A merchandising business, which sells goods that it purchases for resale. And manufacturing businesses, which sell goods that they produce. Merchandising businesses require a different chart of accounts than a service business because merchandising businesses sell products, not services, and our accounting practices will differ as well. The new accounts we will be using are sales, our new revenue account, sales tax payable, a new liability account, sales returns and allowances, a new contra revenue account, sales discount, a new contra revenue account, and credit card expenses, a new expense account. To learn about the accounting practices of merchandising businesses, we will focus on max out sporting goods. This business is a merchandising business that sells the latest sporting goods and sportswear for men, women, and children. It is a retail business, and Max Ferrero is the sole proprietor of the firm. The Max Out Sporting Goods will sell goods that it purchases from its suppliers and will keep track of its available for sale inventory in an, in an account called Merchandise Inventory. What else is different for a merchandising business compared to a service business? The sales account is the revenue account used by a merchandising business or retailer to record sales of merchandise. We will not be using fees income as we did in prior chapters. A retail business requires an accounting system to account for merchandise inventory that it purchased, that has been sold, and that is on hand at any time during the accounting cycle. We will also be studying the periodic inventory system. The cost of inventory on hand must be determined by counting merchandise inventory in stock. That is why it's called periodic inventory system because the business periodically counts what it has in inventory. Larger businesses use a perpetual inventory system, which allows the business to know the number of units and the unit cost for inventory on hand at all times. It is called perpetual inventory system because the system perpetually tracks what it has purchased, what has been sold, and what is in stock. There is still a count, but typically only what is called a cycle count, meaning you are just double checking the accuracy of your system and you're checking for loss and fraud. We'll now be able to look at how sales for merchandising businesses are recorded when the customers buy merchandise for cash or on credit. We have to set up new accounts we will be using for um, our accounting. Sales, sales tax payable, sales discounts, sales returns and allowances, and credit card expenses. The sales account is the primary revenue account for a merchandising company. Let's practice this. Max Out Sporting Goods sells merchandise for cash. We record the sale of $500 for cash by first writing the date in the date columns and then cash into the description column and $500 into the debit column. We debit cash because the business cash increased and cash increases with the debit. On the next line, we slightly indent and write sales into the description column and $500 into the credit column. We credit the sales account because sales increased, and sales is an account that increases with credits. Let's look at the next transaction. Max Out Sporting Goods also grants credit terms to certain customers. 
On January 3rd, Max Out Sporting Goods sold merchandise on credit to Roy Anderson, issuing sales slip 1101 for $400. We record this transaction by first writing the date in the date columns and then accounts receivable into the description column and $400 into the debit column. On the next line, we slightly indent and write the sales into the description column and $400 into the credit column. When Roy Anderson pays Max Out Sporting Goods on January 31st, we reduce the accounts receivable account and increase cash by first writing the date into the date columns and then debiting the cash account and crediting accounts receivable for $400. Most states and many local governments impose a sales tax on the sale of certain goods and services. Businesses are required to collect this tax from their customers and pay it to the tax agency. There are special rules around what is called sales tax nexus, the requirement of a business to collect sales tax in a state. Some sales are exempt, whereas in other cases, the purchaser has a sales tax exempt certificate. In other cases, sales across state lines are only taxable if they exceed a certain dollar amount. In general, though, when taxable goods and services are sold on cash or credit, the sales tax is recorded at the time of sale, even though it will be collected from the customer later in the case of a credit sale. A liability account called sales tax payable is credited for the sales tax charged. Let's look at this transaction where Max Out Sporting Goods was required to charge its customers um, an 8% sales tax. The amount collected for the sales tax on a $500 sale for cash would be for $40, which is calculated by multiplying 500 dollars times eight percent we record this cash sale by debiting cash for 540 dollars why 540 because the customer paid max out the sales tax which the business in turn must pay to the tax agency that liability for the sales tax is recorded on the second line by using a slightly indenting in writing sales tax payable in the description column and $40 into the credit column. The sale amount is recorded on the third line by again slightly indenting and in writing sales in the description column and $500 into the credit column. The next transaction is very similar, but instead of collecting the cash immediately from the customer, in this case, the customer Ann on purchased merchandise on credit for $600 plus sales tax. We record this credit sale by debiting accounts receivable for $648. Why $648? Because the customer owes Max out the sales tax, which in the business in turn must pay to the tax agency. That liability for the sales tax is recorded on the second line by a slightly indenting and writing sales tax payable in the description column and $48 into the credit column. The sale amount is recorded on the third line by again slightly indenting and writing sales in the description column and $600 into the credit column. We previously talked about the audit trail and proper documentation for all accounting transactions. Such documentation is also required for sales transactions. The sales slip tells us who the customer is and the sales amount, the sales tax charged and the total amount that the customer must pay. Often though, these sales slips are digital documents rather than a printed sales slip. 